Hello, and welcome to the Pronunciation Studio POG, the only show of its kind that seamlessly links weak English vowel sounds to marine biology. That's right, this week we're talking schwarks. So I'm on lesson two of the pronunciation course, which is entirely dedicated to the schwa sound, uh. Wait a second, did I just say uh? Well, that doesn't actually exist. Nowhere in English will you hear somebody say uh. And so once again, I feel like I'm lying. Asking an English student to repeat uh is like asking a learner driver to parallel park a ship. It might be a useful and somewhat related skill, but a boat is not a car and a schwa is not a vowel. Well, not really. Not like all the other vowels anyway. And here's why. The schwa only exists in relation to other sounds. It's more a concept than a fixed thing. Let me give you some examples. Let's take the word forgiven. How many schwas? Well, you might think two, and we might do something like forgiven. But in normal speech, there are none. Forgiven. You can safely remove all the vowels from that word except for the i in the middle. Forgiven. Now, let's hear the schwa in some places where it does actually exist. Let's take two very similar words. Await and waiter. Listen again. Await. Waiter. Did you notice a difference there? That's right. In await, there was virtually no schwa. And by virtually no schwa, I mean I can actually say it without one. Wait. But in waiter, there most definitely was. And it was a big one, wasn't it? Waiter. We can't get rid of that one. So yes, finally, I found something approaching an uh. So we've seen four schwas, but only one uh, which was actually t. And this tells you something about the sound. It is a lot of different things at once. Essentially, there are three things to consider. A weak syllable only exists in relation to the strong syllables around it. Now, if a schwa is before a stress syllable, it's going to be really weak. Wait. Forgive. At the other end of the spectrum, it will be pretty big if it's an open ending such as waiter or china. And everywhere else, it will be as small as it possibly can be in connected speech. And wherever a consonant can eat it up, it will. So teaching it as one standard sound, just like all the other sounds, is not quite right. It changes much more than all the other sounds. Another thing that amazes me a little bit about the schwa is the sheer amount of merch and fans it has. I mean, it's the Taylor Swift of English sounds. Learners camp outside all night without tickets just to hear it in the distance. I get it. A lot of learners love the schwa because it seems like the answer to English pronunciation when you first learn about it. So you see t-shirts and mugs with things like I want to be a schwa. It's never stressed printed on them. Almost as if nobody had ever heard Donald Trump say China. If you hear a London Cockney speaker say Wa I don't think you can come away with the idea that this sound is unstressed. Wa No, that's definitely stressed, isn't it? The late English Queen Elizabeth had a real penchant for stressing schwa's Camilla is my successor. Okay, she probably never said that. But you get the idea, the schwa's were quite big. So yeah. Schwa is never stressed. Whatever. So there you have it. Like a stealthy underwater cartilaginous fish, the schwa is essential for balance in the ecosystem of a tone unit. And just like sharks, it's wildly misunderstood. Equally feared and revered, it lurks about underneath the surface of sentences, only occasionally appearing to eat a syllable alive. I'm not actually sure I can get much more out of this metaphor. Or is it a metaphor? Anyway, let's put the schwark to bed for now. Question. 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 Iwa. 
This week I had a question in from Benoit on Instagram asking, is it an assimilation? He's referring to the name of this show, The Pog. It's called that because of, yes, an assimilation when you say the compound podcast. The D goes through a process called regressive assimilation, essentially copying the position of the K that comes after it. So, podcast. I just did a G without releasing it. It only works if you don't release the G. If you do release it, it will sound weird. Podcast. Uh, no. In fact, the alveolar consonants T, D, N all behave in the same way. They pretty much always want to copy the position of the next sound. So that's regressive assimilation. The thing is, there's also another kind of assimilation, which is progressive. In fact, I just did it. Did you spot it? I'll say it again. The thing is, there's another. The thing is, there's another. The thing is, there's another. The voiced dental fricative in there's assimilated to a voiced alveolar fricative from the previous word is. Is. So, the sound before it influenced the following sound. If you have a question for the POG, send it in via the socials, via the website, or by email joseph.hudson at pronunciationstudio.com. Thanks for listening. Speak soon.